Welcome back to Quest for Treasure. We're in Northern California, uh, gold country. We're gonna do some sluicing today, put a lot of work into it. Gone out and done a couple videos, but I don't feel like I quite put in enough hours to really get uh, the results that I want to show you. So a little bit less filming maybe today, I don't know. But and a whole bunch more uh, sluicing and trying to find the gold. And then we want to be at the head of the water flow where there's a lot of heavier gravels. That looks kind of straight. That looks like a bend there. Not sure. Yeah. That was a bit of a walk haul and all that. It's still a little hot this season, but we found a good dynamic spot. We got water flow, we can get out there. You can see it's eaten away this whole hillside here and then washed it down there, spread it out over a beach. I'm not sure what's around the corner. Wanderlust, we'll figure that out. But yeah, it looks like we're coming into an open area. Lots of options. Deep channel before it. Let's do this. This is a really good location. These creeks have been eating all these hillsides away. And when you get up to them, they're just layer after layer of ancient alluvial. Plus right here, and I'm seeing blue clay right under the cobble and signs of other miners. So this is awesome. Let's dabble. Well, I'm not a pro or anything, but I don't know how much better it can get. I'm in huge cobble at the beginning of a long beach in gold country. Two creeks coming together. I'm on this one, that one coming in. That one coming down. And that's all blue clay right there, which is a, like hard pan, the bottom. That's as wide as it goes. And you can see the cobble on top of it, so I'm going to dig in there. Uh, excuse me and see what we find. There's my setup. Got the magic rocks on there. So a lot of good guesses out here. But what I did was I started on the clay and this is the gravels from after I've classified it and thrown it out so we can look for nuggets real quick together. See any? No. So, this is hard packed clay. Sticky gold sticks to it. It's at the bottom of all the gravel here. And I followed this little dent down and then followed it there, and that's a hole. So, this is a little lip of, of clay here. Yeah, I'll show you. You can scrape it, but you can see it's also been molded by water. So, ooh, okay, fun. But as I'm uncovering it here, um, it goes down and down and down, and I'm getting below all this gravel here really deep, and I can see the clay go out this way under the water. So this is a nice little hole because everything that came over flowed down to the water. So that's where we're getting our material from this first run. So I'm a hole in the clay.
it's really pretty out here. Big open areas. Prairie dog cam. Okay, a little while later on, there's uh, everything getting all mucky. I'm letting it clear out. I like to do that so I don't freak people out, especially when we have a certain distance of mud downstream. I'm going to try to get you a better shot while well, this is on there, though. I'm down to the bottom of the hole. So this is clay, a clay hole that got eaten there by the river at some point. I made that little stack of stones, but you can see the natural hole. I actually hit the bottom of it, and then it goes back up and it's shallow here. So we were lucky to get down underneath all of that gravel and get to the bottom of this puppy. You can see how steep it is, so everything that was coming along, and at one point there was probably this much gravel over it. So uh, things have sifted down and down and down and down, and now we are at the bottom of the clay hole and gonna kind of work our way back underneath the big boulders and things that we know haven't moved very much. But I guess this is a, one of those rivers where they uh, raise and lower the water level with the dam. So it's actually gone down. See the bank over there? So it changed the dynamic of my sluice and I had to switch it up real quick. But then we'll be back to it. Look at that hole. Pretty awesome. There's the clay bank coming along. There's clay right under there. It rolls over and then that's even deeper. I don't know if you can tell, but that's deeper than the water level out there. So we're digging below gravel, below water without having to deal with all that. So pretty lucky. Oh, look at me. I am so tough. I am a lizard. or mud daubers or whatever they are down here by the clay doing the same thing I am getting the precious resource I think they build nests out of it and get nutrients and place to drink that's shallow and, and all of that but there's a lot of them but totally friendly to me all day so it's going to wrap it up for us here uh, thank you for watching I will give you a clean up video when I'm done sorting it out this evening and I'll show you that process and uh, so we'll be back in a bit. And that is pretty much it for the river today. For this spot. That's where the hole was. Now we're just part of a cobble field again. So onwards and upwards, people. Onwards and upwards. Film this big old rattler out here we just drove by. It's kind of freaky. The old monster is out on the pavement. Better get off the road before somebody comes along here, dude. Serious. Anyways, there he is. He's coming after us now. We're coming in. Ah. So, they come out and sit on the pavement because it stays warm and get crushed there a lot. We're gonna go ahead and drive on by you before you're at striking distance here, buddy. Yeah, he's not that afraid, huh? Move around him here and leave him to his fate. Luckily it's not that busy of a road. Anyhow, on home.
back home. Just wanted to show you my uh, my setup that I use. This is all the equipment that I'll use for cleanup. So I have these. You can buy them at uh, in your medical aisle. You know, at your at your uh, drug store, and they come wrapped in a little sterile cellophane. They're for uh, eye drops, I guess, but they work real good. That's that. Got a little container. These come in glass or plastic. Anything will work, but I like a little clear one so I can see what's going on. Not too big to where the little gold gets lost. Uh, my pan. You've seen that before. A little feed bucket container. That's all the water that you actually need. A couple of magnets for lifting out all the ferrous material. And then the concentrates that we got earlier from our sluice. Bubbles in the pan there. Um, that's I use detergent uh, type of dishwashing soap. Any any surface tension breaker. Um, you know, it breaks grease, busts the grease off the dishes where it really does. So your gold and fine things that might float on surface tension because they're so small actually uh, sink down in there. And what I've done is first I took a handful, put it in the pan there, um, started the video with it, or started the panning without you because I wasn't sure what we were going to find. So put the magnets through there. This is all stuff that sticks to it, so I feel like it's good to get that burden out of your pan just to start with. And I'll do it again when we're down to the black sand. But um, I was literally going through this first little pan here. And no joke, you see that? That is more than what they call color, which is a speck. I mean, that's an actual, let me see. Can we pick it? Can't quite pick it, it's a flake. But that, my friend, that's gold. So this is another one of those creeks that's not exactly listed on their uh, main gold tourist destination places but it is in gold country and I was told oh you won't find anything but micro dust that you can't even see and I tell you guys it's not a little bad piece to have show up in your pan the very first little washout here so <laughs> not bad look what we found today you guys saw it we'll put that in a jar but yeah let me see can we drop something by it so that'll be our standard there. So not insignificant at all. Awesome. We might be going back to that spot, folks. Always check your little stones that are left in there, too. I'm looking at this one. I'm seeing gold in a part of it. And if you actually find it in there... Sorry, I thought I saw more. If you find it in the actual stone, then you know where it's being located near you. Let me get that one wet again. Pretty sure I was seeing gold down in there. Maybe. Right in there on the end by my thumb. So we're going to save that. And you can tell we were doing a good job when we were on the ball because you recognize these. These are a shot from a shotgun. So, out of that whole creek, we found uh, nugget sized little pieces of lead. So, if those had been gold, we would have found them. So, walking up to a riverbank, there's another one. And pulling a bunch of lead shot out of the bottom of the river you know that you are on the ball so that's always a good sign the color just washed out see it there a little fleck of gold where's our penny so there's the relative size now keep in mind you're not looking for a, a nugget every time you're just trying to consistently find some gold and then when the nugget falls in your pan it's like that big fish just like anything else so pretty cool I'm happy already. Second pan. There's the bottom where I tilted all to. As I'm sitting here swishing it out. Guess what's showing up? More little lead pellets. They're just the first things I can see, but it lets me know that I'm on the money because they sit 
in the lowest spots of the creek where the gold will. So if you're finding them and you are just right on the ball and if there's gold there it'll end up sitting next to it and I like every other gold miner am removing all of this wow I don't believe this you guys check it out not only is every load have a lot of these lead pellets I mean good job on that because we really nailed the location of where to find heavy stuff sinking down in the creek but look at that see that that's a gemstone now I get garnet sometimes but little ones and that is like citrine or peridot there it is see if I can get some light on that for you There it is. I try not to move around too much. You see it's got little facets to it? Where's our penny? Now come on, that's an okay size little gemstone. Not bad. See if I can get it in a better light here. It was actually sparkling up at me out of the pan. That is a little peridot. Or citrine, not sure which. Awesome. Well, see, collateral bonus, serendipitous, whatever you want to call it. It's because we're getting down to where all the heavy stuff is. So any minerals or gems that do occur, and lead bullets and everything else will be down here. So that's part of the fun of sifting through the bottom of a river. Okay, this is going to be the cleanup for uh, this little gold expedition. There's only about a sixth of that bucket filled up though. Didn't get as many runs down through the sluice as I meant to, but look at all of that uh, lead that we've gathered up. It's ridiculous. So, glad to get that out of there. We'll dispose of that properly and then this is our findings so there's that gold fleck and that gem and then all this other silver that was in there speculation at this point whether it's uh, mercury or titanium or silver but it's as, as heavy as the gold hanging out so there's actually more of that in this spot than there is gold but anyhow there's that, it's basically there, that's it's true size, so I'll magnify it up on you, I was just trying to get you a close up, not trick you, there it is, and then, so we got heavy silver stuff that's precious, heavy gold stuff that's precious, and then a gemstone, and we will get the light on there one more time. If it makes a difference anywhere. Oh, okay, well, thank you for sticking with us. And uh, we will see you next time. We'll see you out there. The quest for details. And this quest for treasure.